every human being lives in what the Bible calls predestination. Our destiny has been prepared before time. It gets better. Listen to this. It says, recreated people born anew to fulfill the destiny that God has given each one of us. There's a destiny for each one of us. No human being is born by mistake. I don't care what happened before you were born, but the Bible says no human being is born by mistake. Today we are talking about living by the dynamic power of the Holy Spirit. Let me repeat my topic today. Living by the dynamic power of the Holy Spirit. Now we are looking at the expose of the book of Romans, chapter number 8. What I've discovered as we meditate on the word of God is this, that if you want to, to grow in the things of the Lord, it's not about reading or meditating to finish the Bible. I just discovered that you can take one chapter for the whole month and just eat it. Eat it. You won't get more than what you can when you're reading the Bible like that. It's just a discovery. You can live, I'm, 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 I'm living of Romans 8 and I'm living of Corinthians, but more of Romans 8. I kept on going there over and over again because there's something that I gain from, from meditating and eating on Romans chapter number eight. And that's why I share these things because this is what the Lord is talking to me. And we're growing together. And we'll be growing and growing and growing. So le learn to, 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 to repeat the scriptures. Learn not to read and pass by. Learn to repeat. Learn to repeat. Sometimes you don't know what God will speak to you through those, those scriptures. Like the church in China, most of them, they don't have the Bibles. They are given saying, oh, read chapter, Matthew chapter 1, you will chapter number 2. And when the pastor wants to speak, they don't have the Bible. He says, I want to read Matthew chapter number 1. Somebody who has memorized the verse in Matthew chapter number 1 keeps on speaking that way because they, they don't have the Bible most of the time. You know, sometimes those apps are blocked in China. If you are from China, you, you have those apps in your Bible they are, they, that have got Bibles, they are being blocked. You can't access them. So those times will come. That's why sometimes maybe God is preparing us that sometimes we have to meditate on one chapter over and over again. We never know what will happen in the future. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, let's go to verse 1. We're going to go from verse, chapter, from verse 1 to verse 15. But this is where we'll be basing our our discussion based on living by the dynamic power of the Holy Spirit. Now, Christianity, Basalwan, is, is not going to, is what I can say, there is absolutely no Christianity without the Holy Spirit. Not only that, we cannot live the life that God has said you must live without the Holy Spirit. No matter how much I can tell you to live a holy life, Without the help of the Holy Spirit, you cannot do it. Am I talking to, am I talking to someone here? Listen to this one. The first element that you must have is that you are born again. And when you are born again, this is the first thing that you must know. It must register in your mind. For the Holy Spirit to help you to live the life of a Christian or a Christian life, this verse 1, you must know it. By, not necessarily that you know it by heart. It must be, you, you need to understand it. Because we can say, this, therefore there's now no condemnation to those that are in Christ. And people don't understand what is the meaning of that. Let's read from the, from, from the, from the TPT. It says, so now the case is closed. When Jesus died, he finished everything. He says here, there remains no accusing voice of condemnation against, against those who are in Christ Jesus. And another way says, there is no guilty verdict. You know, church, if you 
you need to know, as a Christian, you are doing better than you think. I don't think you understand what I'm saying. Satan will always want to magnify your mistakes. He will try to pull you down. Bring voices that will accuse you. But there's something that Jesus said. He says, hey, that case is closed. The accuser of our brethren has been cast down. That's why he says, there's no remaining voice of condemnation against those who are in Christ. Remember, the day you received Jesus Christ, you went to be in Christ. One Christ. You are there. No man can pluck you out. That's what Jesus Christ told, told us. That's why the Apostle Paul says, our life is hidden with Christ in God. The day you receive Christ, you are with Christ. Then Christ took you together. You are in God. Jesus said in John, no man can pluck you out. That's why he says, there is no remaining voice of accusation. How does the devil want to take you out of Christ? By speaking words of defeat in your mind. Speaking words of accusation in your mind. Keep on accusing you. Keep on accusing you. Keep on accusing you until you see yourself as useless. Until you see yourself that the, you, you cannot do things. I, I wanted to tell us, I want to tell you something. Every time you fall into sin, sometimes if you go back, most of the time when people fall into sin, in their mind, they tell them, if, if, he did, if he does one mistake, he can't rise up. So I get fun. Can you hear what I'm saying? Get fun. The minute one, once a person says, get fun, that's where the devil wants you. There remain no accusing voice. So when you, don't ref when, when you refuse the accuser to keep on accusing you of your weaknesses, of the things that you have, you have done, which are your mistakes, if you live above that, you will live a very successful life. If you live above the voices that speaks against your past, if you live above those voices, you will live a victorious life. Because Satan always wants you to pull you back to the peaks, to the dirty where you were, where, where the blood has took you out and cleansed you from the dead. He wants to take you back. Should he? It's like I always say years, up, years ago is that when, when a car, uh, you are going and you are going and somehow a bus or a car comes with and there's water and then it comes and the dirty water comes and spill you. You don't remain like that. You wash yourself. You go and you don't say, ah, get fun. I say, you. you say that. What do you do? You go and change. The same way in Christian work. Should you find yourself in a position where you, you, you were in a bad position, what do you do? You're going to go and wash yourself by the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus Christ is there to wash us from all unrighteousness, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's why Romans 8, in the opening, he says, there remain no, no accusing voice against those who are in Christ Jesus. There remain no accusing voice of condemnation to them that are in Christ. If you are in Christ, you are a new creation. And Satan doesn't love people who understand that they are Christians, they are born again, that they are in Christ Jesus. He doesn't love those people. He always wants to say, oh, we are weak. We, we, we are human beings. You know, when people were not perfect, he, that's a language he wants you to talk. Do you understand that that language God doesn't want in you? That's why John wrote something in the book of John, 1 John. The Bible says, 
Do you know that we don't sin? He didn't understand it, what it means. When you are in Christ, when you are born again, your new creation man does not sin. Doesn't. That's why he says, there are those works other than the flesh. So the, the issue is you need to live by the dynamic power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to show you this thing. That's why I had to start it from there so you can understand. When you read the book of Romans, he put it so clearly that, hey, we should never ever ignore the Holy Spirit in our lives. One of the things that makes Christians to fail is not that they are weak. Is that they ignore the presence of the Holy Spirit in their lives. So if you can understand why the Holy Spirit was given, why he is there, the Holy Spirit is not tongues. Tongues are a gift. Did you understand what I said? Tongues are a byproduct that you have received. That's why the Bible says they receive the Holy Spirit with the evidence. So it's a byproduct of you having the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is bigger than tongues. He's a person. And he lives in your body. That's why you must acknowledge him. When you acknowledge him, he will direct. Jesus says, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will, he will direct you. He will lead you. He will help. That's what the, the, Jesus says. He will help you. So you have not received the Holy Spirit for the sake of speaking in tongues. You have received the Holy Spirit as your helper to fight against sin. Now, Christ lives in you. Even though, look at this, even though your body may be dead, because of the effects of sin. In other words, even though your body can decay because of sin, can have sickness, can have diseases, can be affected by sin. If, for example, say you smoke, so you drink, your lungs are affected, your, your liver is affected. It says, even though your body, maybe you were not eating healthy, we, we have... Uh, we are abyss. Are, our bodies are dead because of sin. But he says, the Spirit gives its life. The Holy Spirit gives its life because, because you are fully accepted by God. Your version will say, because of righteousness. And then he says here, yeah, because we are fully accepted by God. When you receive Jesus Christ, you receive righteousness. You receive the right standing with God. Therefore, God gives the Holy Spirit. Why the Holy Spirit lives in your body? To help you to fight against this kind of infiltrations. The day the people of God will understand the Holy Spirit fully in their lives. That's when Jesus Christ will come back. Remember what the Bible says. Jesus is coming for a church without spot, without wrinkle. And that kind of a church is the kind of a church who will understand who they are. Who will understand that they are too powerful, just like Moses. Moses, he lives in the, in the old covenant. But he was ahead of time. He was in the new covenant. That's why God had to ask him to die. He would not have died. The way he walked with God, he would not have died. Paul the Apostle says, I'll tell you a mystery. Let me read this verse. I read this verse many, many times. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 54. Verse 51. Yeah. Is there someone who has a, a mic out there who can read it for me? Listen. And I will tell you a divine mystery. Mm -hmm. Not all of us will die, mm -hmm. but we'll all be transformed. 
this verse, it says exactly what it says. The Apostle Paul, at some particular time, he didn't believe he was going to die. He, he, he pointed at himself. He says, I tell you a mystery. And all of us. It says a mystery. Now, this mystery, the Bible says, have been hidden, but now have been revealed. It, it's for those who will understand the Holy Spirit. Okay. Let's go, let's go back. I, I, I was just sharing you with you something here. Now, Basal Mam, look at, let's start, let's read verse 4. So now, the righteous requirement can be fulfilled, uh, I mean, the, the righteous requirement of the law can be fulfilled through the anointed one living a life within us. Hey. And this is in the TPT. I don't know, in your Bibles, it doesn't say the way it says here. It says, and we are free to live not according to our flesh, but by the dynamic power of the Holy Spirit. He says, hey, as a child of God, when you are here, you are not here to fulfill the requirements of the law, but you are free. He says, it's, it's a choice. To live not according to the flesh, but by the dynamic power of the Holy Spirit. Now, he's telling you that, hey, for me not to live and follow the dictates of the flesh, I can live by the dynamic power of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus Christ told the disciples, he says, wait for me in Jerusalem. He says, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. He says, you shall receive power. After the Holy Spirit has come upon me and then and upon you, then you shall become witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. Now, when you look at the word witnesses, you will think that they will be preaching just by preaching. To become a witness is when a person is a witness, is someone who has seen something and testifying about what he has seen. That's a witness. Am I right? If they say someone ukangi le koto. Become a witness. Then you stand and you have And say, I have seen this thing. And then the Bible says, when you receive the Holy Spirit, then you become my witness. That means you will have an encounter with God. When you have an encounter with God, he says, listen, then he says, here, listen to this one. He says, you are free not to live after the flesh, but by the dynamic power, when you receive power of the Holy Spirit, it qualifies you to become a witness to say, I cannot live after the flesh. Okay, we, 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 we will continue. It will get better as we continue. And then he says here, those who are motivated, I'm reading verse 5, I'm continuing. Those who are motivated by the flesh only pursue what benefits themselves. <laughs> Those who live after the flesh, they pursue only those things that benefit themselves. That means they are selfish. It's a the flesh. These things that benefit themselves. But he continues. He says, but those who live by the dictates, by the impulses, by the leadership of the Holy Spirit, are motivated to pursue spiritual realities. Oh, Jesus. Spiritual realities. Do you know, church, that all that we see here are not the reality? Even quantum physics now, those who know physics, quantum physics now is beginning to, exp I mean, to explain that there's another atmosphere other than the atmosphere that we can see with our physical eyes. It's only quantum physics. That, can, that, has, that has experienced this. And they, 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 can, they can count and say, if you can go to this kind of an atmosphere, not point, not point, so much, so much, so much, then you can be transported to another realm. And then he says here, yeah, this, when you are pursuing the things of the spirit, you are pursuing spiritual realities. Remember what the Bible says, the things that we see are not permanent, they are temporal. 
But the things that you don't see, they are, they are permanent. In other words, whatever we go through is temporary. Whatever we see, whatever the flesh brings, it is temporary. That's why he says, hey, don't be motivated by the things of this world. Look for spiritual realities. Go higher. Go to another dimension. Because when you look at the things of the flesh, you are motivated by, he says you are motivated to, for things to benefit yourself. Then in verse 6, then he tells you where this thing began. He says, to be carnally minded is death. And then he says, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So he tells you, listen, the issue for a believer is the mind. If God can be able to transform your mind to think spiritually, you see, years ago, they will tell us, don't spiritualize everything. I'm here to tell you, spiritualize everything. Because life is spiritual. If he, everything that happens in the physical started in the spirit, that's why it says, pursue spiritual realities. Pursue spiritual realities. Be motivated by the impulses of the spirit. He says, when you are motivated by that, then he says in verse 14, as many as are led by the spirit, they are the sons of God. And he tells that creation is waiting for the manifestation of those who are pursuing spiritual realities. So in other words, God is waiting for you. We have been waiting for the move of God, and I'm here to tell that the move of God is here. God is waiting for us. Because the Bible says, creation is waiting for, for your manifestation. Remember, when you are born again, you receive the Holy Spirit. You didn't receive the Holy Spirit just to speak in other tongues. Speak, speaking in other tongues is a gateway to the supernatural. So use those tongues as a gateway to the supernatural. As you use those tongues, you are rising up to become a man who is led. Who is led. The secret for a believer is to allow the Holy Spirit to lead him or to lead her. Because when we can allow the Holy Spirit to lead us, there is no failure. If God I mean, I mean, it's a sin for a child of God to fail when we're having the Holy Spirit. It's a sin. What if you cannot fail? It's all written in your favor. It says here, the mind set focus on the flesh. Look at that. Verse 7. The mind set focus on the flesh, fights God's plan, and refuses to submit to the direction of God. Because it cannot. So it's telling you something here. He says, listen, it's all about the mindset. That's why the Apostle Paul in Romans 12, 12 I mean, Romans 12, 2, he says, renew your mind. So it's, a, it's about the mindset of a believer. Am I talking to someone here? It's about the mindset of the believer. So if you're a believer, you don't change your mind to spiritual realities. You, 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 you live according to the news media. That's why what you feed yourself in is very important. The narrative that you are looking at things or at the news is not the narrative that you must look at in the things of the spirit. You must see God in the news. I don't know whether I'm making sense. You, you must see God in the news. Look at a different narrative, different perspective. You go higher. You look at the word of God. Once you look at the word of God, then you know what God is saying to you. Mm. 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 In fact, the mindset focus on the flesh fights God's plan. So our, 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 our walk with God is always to peel the flesh. Your life is like an onion. You see, you have to peel layers of layers of the flesh. Until you see clearly, until there's nothing on the onion you can see clearly. Peel it. 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 Pe
freely. That's, that's, that's our work with the Lord. He says, the mindset of the flesh, it fights the plan of God. Remember, I was talking about the destiny last week. So you cannot, you, if you walk in the flesh, it will fight the destiny of God concerning your life. Case in point, if God says, go to this place, and then you listen to the news, they say, in this place, there is war. You say, ah, I'm not going. You are fighting the, you, you, you're not going higher to look into the eyes of the spirit. Funa God is, is sending you there to stop the war. Do you know that one believer can change a nation? Have you not read about Jonah in the Bible? Jonah who went to Nineveh. Do you know he was the only one? The Bible says 120,000. Go and read there. The city was about 120,000. One preacher preached that city to repentance. That's even bigger than Nell's prayer. One city of 120,000 people, one man changed it. Think about how many of us are here. 